At first, the ASUS Zenfone 6 may not look like the flashiest or even the most unique device, up until you open up the camera and then you try to take a selfie. This is Pocket Now and I'm Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? Here's your review of the ASUS Zenfone 6. All right, so sprinkled throughout this video, you're going to be seeing photos and videos from a very special place where I took the Zenfone 6. We were on a trip to India, to the cities of Delhi and Mumbai, and I had this phone as my daily driver throughout that time. So that's just a little taste of what these cameras are able to do. And the fact that you can use the main cameras and they're both really good as your front-facing cameras, that's just one of the best parts about the Zenfone 6. And that's the reason why I've been using it every single day. This is one of my, this has honestly been my, my daily driver since I first got this phone. So we're gonna talk a little bit more about the device, but I just wanted to give you a taste of what this thing is capable of. We'll talk a little bit more at another location here in India, so transition. The ASUS Zenfone 6 is a pretty unassuming device. After all, this dark color does shine in pretty well. However, it does mask a lot of the fingerprints that end up getting smudged on this glossy surface. You might notice I'm using a case here and it's a little bit beat up. Uh, I've clearly been using this phone a lot since I first got it. Uh, in any case, the reason why I'm using a case here is because the phone itself is pretty slippery. It's got a glossy feel to it. So a case really helps in making sure I don't drop this thing while I'm vlogging. The logo on the back is fairly simplistic, adding to this phone's unassuming quality. And above that is a fingerprint reader already alluding to one main fact about this phone. It may not be hitting all of the trends of current smartphones like an in-display fingerprint reader, but that doesn't mean that the features it chooses to use are any less reliable. The phone is fairly thin, despite there being a 5,000 mAh battery underneath. And there's actually an extra button over on the side that allows you to communicate with Google Assistant uh, in a walkie-talkie fashion. You can actually hold the button and be able to say what you need to Google Assistant, let go, and it will only take that string rather than trying to figure out when you stopped talking. Keeping up with the theme that this phone does have features that you may not expect a current flagship to have, but you might ultimately appreciate, there's even a notification light that has come in handy when I have the phone sitting on a table, and it's just blinking either orange or green or even red, like right now, to let me know that I'm low on battery. The screen is unfortunately where you might find a couple of the compromises. It's not only an IPS display, it also is full HD plus resolution, not quad HD. You know, it's a it's it's a cloudy day, but it's also still really, really bright. Trying to get photos with this phone, um, the screen unfortunately is just really dim. It's just too dim for what it should be. Uh, and being able to get photos very effectively, especially at certain angles, it just makes it really tough. Uh, the screen should definitely be a lot brighter here. Uh, it's generally good, but in these situations, it's not doing its job. That's really odd because it's an IPS display, and famously, IPS displays are usually pretty bright. So I'm not too sure what happened here. Powering all of this is the Snapdragon 855 with 8 gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of onboard storage, at least in my unit. I haven't had any issues with apps whatsoever, and especially when it comes to gaming, I've been able to play many of the current titles, uh, and actually some new ones also, uh, without any problems at all. You even get some features that allow you to turn off notifications, or you can actually lock the na navigation bar so you don't accidentally press something, and you can also do some video recording while gaming, which is pretty cool if you want to do some content. Whether it be with games or with media, you can also use wired headsets with this because this is one of those phones that actually comes with a headphone jack. With this kind of high specification list, you might expect some features to be missing, like we're starting to see that trend in current flagship smartphones. But no, you get that rear fingerprint reader, a headphone jack, and a notification light. These are things that you don't really get a whole lot these days. And then ASUS went ahead and tackled a very specific problem by using a unique solution. We all would love to use the high quality rear facing cameras as our front facing shooters as well. After all, famously, front facing shooters have been much lower quality, definitely lower in megapixels and ultimately just a little bit softer around the edges. But instead, ASUS went ahead and just made a flipping mechanism so that both of these good cameras become your front shooters. You get the Sony 48 megapixel IMX sensor and a 16 megapixel wide angle. This entire unit can flip right up, not only to be used as a selfie camera, but also to be used as facial recognition. 
The mechanism is supposed to work after thousands of uses, and so far I haven't really noticed any problems with it. You can even move it manually when you are using the camera, and there are different prompts so that you can use the touchscreen in order to move it slowly uh, along its axis. But of course, it's all about that picture quality and the usage on the daily as a daily smartphone camera. And that is where I had a lot of fun at the Taj Mahal and in various places in India. Having a mechanism like this just makes certain functions easier, like a panorama. But of course, the main function of a mechanism like this is to make sure that your portraits, your selfies, and your self video all look really great. And honestly, they do. If you're one to do some segments on IG stories, you can rest assured that the audio sounds good as well. So you can use the wide angle camera in order to share more of your background or use the regular Sony 48 megapixel sensor to get some high quality video that is also stabilized. And that concludes our tour of the Taj Mahal. Now, looking back on the photos that you saw in this particular piece, like, you know you wouldn't be able to get those kinds of views without a wide-angle camera. It just so happens that the Zenfone 6 just gets so many things right. While it does have the Sony 48 megapixel IMX sensor, and that's already an incredible thing to use for photography and for videography, honestly, the wide-angle just is good enough. It's good. They get it right. It may not be the best wide-angle camera out there, but it gets the job done, and that's exactly what you need on a phone that has that secondary lens. And all of the modes are available in either orientation, even the night mode and an HDR mode that can be a little bit aggressive at times, but ultimately you still get some good results no matter what. This particular phone proves that a simple solution can actually be implemented. Actually flipping the rear cameras to the front is something we've seen in a couple of phones by now, but the Zenfone 6 I think is one of the most practical, but also the most fun examples. For some users, this phone might be lacking in the current trends of flagship smartphones, like having a fingerprint reader that's on the rear or uh, not having a quad HD display. But despite those trade-offs, you still get a great daily experience. It's one that is reliable and easy to navigate thanks to the Googleified software. And then you have a great camera experience that is actually loads of fun because that mechanism never gets old. And now ASUS is making this phone more available in other markets, including the United States, where it is now on pre-order. So you can actually get your hands on this phone, where in the past, this was actually a kind of a hot commodity, something you couldn't find too easily. And if you do get your hands on this phone, let us know in the comments section how you feel about it. Clearly, I'm a big fan of this phone, and I've been able to get some really awesome photos, videos, and daily experiences out of it for many different destinations that I've been to over the last few months. But that's when we pass the question off to you. How do you feel about the ASUS Zenfone 6? Obviously, ASUS made a splash not only with this phone, but with a more recent device that hopefully we're going to see very soon. Uh, but they are on a roll so far, and the Zenfone 6 is a wonderful example of a phone that just gets a lot of stuff right and actually tries to solve some problems with some unique solutions. In any case, we're going to call it on this one. Thank you so much for watching. Let us know how you feel about the Zenfone 6. If you have one, let us know what your experience has been. And then drop some likes on these videos. Continue having the discussion in the comments and subscribe to the Pocket Now channel if you haven't already. From there, like I said already, I'm going to call it on this one. Thank you again so much for watching, and we will see you in our next video.